I found this sarcastic tweet about the true skills needed to be an effective software engineer, and I thought it was hilarious. There is a kernel of truth behind each of these so-called skills that are listed. In this video, I wanna walk through each of the bullet points and provide some actually helpful advice that you can apply to your engineering job. The first skill needed for an effective software engineer is begging for code review. And I love this because there is a lot of truth behind it. There's actually a whole subculture around how do you ping the reviewers of your code review in a tactful way and you leave a meme, for example, and remind them that you're still waiting for review. The idea here is that as a software engineer, one of the primary ways that you have impact, unsurprisingly, is writing code. The challenge is how do you now get someone to take time out of their day to review your code? If you think about it, the incentive structure isn't really set up for that, right? Like if you're the code author and you fix a bug or you ship a feature, you get a ton of credit, you get a ton of accolades for that, but the code reviewer doesn't really get that much benefit. And so you really have to rely on the altruism in some sense of people on the team to be able to give you thoughtful feedback and make you a better engineer. Especially if you are the new person on the team and you're working on an independent isolated project, like you're working in some silo, then the fact of the matter is that you are very easy to ignore. I have a whole video dedicated to how effective code review looks and works, but your job as a new engineer or frankly any engineer on the team is to be able to make it easy for the people on your team to give you that feedback. Here are a few tips to make code review faster and easier for you. Number one, make the summary and test plan of your code change very clear. You wanna make it easy for your team to understand what your code change is about, and you wanna convince them that it's safe. Simple things like adding a screenshot or a video of the impact of your code change, they only take a couple minutes, but they make a huge, huge impact on how your change is perceived, and it'll lead to a faster and easier code review. The second tip is to add the right people on the review. So very often I found engineers are kind of in autopilot where they'll add their tech lead and maybe their onboarding buddy as the code reviewer, but there is usually going to be someone who's more equipped, has more context about the change you're making. And so the common way to do this is to blame the file, look at what recent changes have occurred in that file and who's the author of those changes and add them as a reviewer because they'll have a lot more ability to dive in and give you quick feedback on your change relative to someone who has to ramp up on that file or on that module. And finally, if you continue to have problems with code review velocity slowing you down, then I would encourage you to actually talk about it. Rather than just pinging people repeatedly, have a meeting with your tech lead or with the entire team and talk about is this an issue with just you or is it a systemic issue that many people are encountering? And then you could think about how can you solve it? For example, maybe you don't need to require two or three reviews, instead just require one review. Or could you expand the people who have the authority to approve the code? Things like that can make a meaningful difference on how long people are waiting for code review and they no longer have to beg. The second skill for software engineers is convincing the team that you didn't break the build. Breaking the build means that you committed code which either doesn't compile or it doesn't work. So for example, it broke a unit test. Obviously, no one wants to break the build because it puts you in a really high pressure situation and you're effectively blocking dozens of engineers, your whole team, from checking in additional code. Needless to say, this can be really stressful, which is why this is one of the core skills of engineer is to convince people that you didn't break the build. And a lot of engineers will revert to what I call CYA, cover your appendage. And that basically means that you're proving to people that you had nothing to do with the build failure. Talking about the actual underlying idea here, you ideally wanna work in a blameless environment. Writing code is a human endeavor. At least it is for now until AI takes over the world. But for now, writing code is a very human exercise. And because you have humans involved, it is inevitable that the code that is outputted will have bugs. You just can't get around the fact that code software will be buggy. The question then becomes not how do we remove bugs or how do we remove mistakes because those are gonna happen no matter what, but how do we minimize the impact of mistakes made by engineer? What you should do as a mature engineer is blame the process and not the person. So if a build does break, what you should have is a postmortem where you do a retrospective about why the build broke. And then you ask the question, what could we have done to prevent this going forward? For example, you could add more blocking tests into the continuous integration system. You could have a brown bag about the common ways that people break the build, or you could remove randomness from the testing framework to make the system more reliable. There are a lot of different solutions, but the idea is that you want to have safeguards in place so that an individual engineer making a mistake can't break the system, can't ruin the productivity of an entire team. By the way, these are the types of skills that you need to develop more and more as you become a more senior engineer. And it's the entire point of the product I'm developing called Taro. Join Taro.com, I'll leave a link for it in the description. 
And the idea is that you can learn from really high quality, high credibility people in the top tech companies. And you can learn how do they get promoted? What behaviors do they exhibit? And you can ask questions of them. So jointower.com and if you have a learning budget, an education budget at your company, there's a really good chance you can be part of the premium tier of Taro instead of the free version entirely for free because you can get it reimbursed from your company. The third skill is to make up important sounding meetings so your calendar looks full. And I love this because it's so true. I literally did this in a couple of the different jobs I had in my career. The tension is that engineering is creative work and it requires long blocks of uninterrupted time. The issue is that for managers, non-engineers, and other people who are not on the maker schedule, they interpret these long blocks of uninterrupted time as a good opportunity to interrupt you and schedule a meeting with you and distract you. And when you have a lot of small chunks of meetings that interrupt you throughout the day, that requires context switching and it makes you way less productive. To combat this, what many engineers will do, which is what the skill is referring to, is they'll basically block off parts of their day as a self meeting and they'll be marked as busy during that time so no one can interrupt them. And in fact, we actually do this right now with Taro. So Alex and I and the team, we will mark off all of Wednesday as a blocked off focus day. So we don't take any meetings, we don't have any external engagements on Wednesdays because we are focused on the deep work of writing code or writing docs or things that require deeper concentration. In my career, I've observed repeatedly that meetings are the number one way that software engineers waste time. Either they'll attend meetings that they don't need to be at, or the meeting itself shouldn't have happened. It could have been much better done as an email. The best way to handle this and actually use this skill is to feel empowered to block off a whole day or maybe even two days of your calendar just for doing the deep work of writing code and doing things that require more concentration. The senior engineer behavior here would be to talk to other engineers on the team, talk to the manager and agree on a day or a set of days where the entire team is in focus mode. And so that way it actually becomes a lot easier to coordinate that everyone on the team, for example, is blocked off on Wednesday. So everyone knows that that's a day that they can really get things done and no one should be scheduling a recurring meeting or any meeting on that Wednesday. Finally, I have a fourth bonus skill for software engineers, which is sounding impressive during performance review. Performance reviews are critical to everyone's career. It'll dictate whether you get promoted or not and how much of a compensation increase you get. And so there is a pretty big incentive to make big claims about how much you've achieved, how much impact you've landed in the previous year or the previous half. The nugget of truth in this skill is that you really wanna make an effort to market yourself and the achievements you've had and of course you don't wanna lie about it, but there is a way of presenting yourself in a very positive way. So your manager's job and other people who review your packet, they can give you the credit where credit's due. By the way, if you need help with this, we have a lot of case studies from very senior folks about how they got promoted, including my own promotion story that you can find in the Taro app. My advice here is to keep a brag document about all the wins you've had throughout that performance cycle. As humans, it's really easy to have a bias toward what happened in the past one or two weeks or the past month, there's a recency bias, but it's easy to forget all the cool things that you might have worked on four or five months ago. And so with the brag document, every time you have any kind of a win, you shipped a feature, you resolved a conflict with a coworker, you were able to identify a bug that no one else was able to, write that down in your brag document. And that way you have a lot of ammunition to write an effective self-review when it comes time for a performance review. You should also realize that performance review is not a solo activity. You need to have your peers and your manager on your team as you go through the process. And so I actually would encourage you to share the brag document with your manager, not only to keep them up to date as you are doing different things, but also you can get your manager's feedback about what they would like to see in order to make a very strong case for you at the end of year cycle. That's all I had for this video. Thanks to John for writing such a good tweet. And I do think some of the skills here are actually quite useful if you're able to morph them and transform them into actually productive and valuable skills that will help you in your engineering journey. Let me know in the comments, what other skills do you think are needed that don't get taught in a boot camp or in a university setting that you found out only when you started working? Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.